Exposition by Charles Hedden Spurgeon Psalm 51 Verses 1 to 5 Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according unto the multitude of your tender mercies blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned, and done this evil in your sight, that you might be justified when you speak, and be clear when you judge. Behold I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Apostrophe it is not merely that I have sinned in practice, but I am a sinner by nature. Sin would not have come out of me if it had not first been in me. I am a mass of sin and must, therefore, be loathsome in your sight. 6, 7. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part you shall make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop. Take the bunch of hyssop as the priests did, dip it into the basin filled with sacrificial blood, purge me with hyssop. Apply the precious blood of Jesus to me. 7, 8. And I shall be clean, wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which you have broken may rejoice. He feels like a man whose bones are broken and he asks the Lord, by putting away his sin, to bind up those broken bones till every one of them should sing a song of gratitude to the divine healer. 9-13 Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clear heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with your free spirit then will I teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be converted unto you. If you will only save me, I will tell everybody about it. I will be a preacher as well as a penitent. Rising from my knees where I have been confessing my sin, rejoicing that you have blotted it all out, I will hasten away and tell others what a good God you are, and they will believe my testimony, and sinners shall be converted unto you. 14. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God. David had been guilty of the death of Uriah. It is a proof of his sincerity that he does not mince matters, but calls a spade a spade and prays, Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God. 14. The God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. Apostrophe I will not only preach, but I will also sing. I will be preceptor as well a preacher. A Christian can never do too much for the Lord who has so graciously pardoned him. David feels that he cannot do anything right, either singing or preaching, by himself, so he adds. 15. O Lord, open you my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you desire not sacrifice, otherwise I would give it you delight not in burnt offering. God cares little for the mere outward forms of worship. Ritualistic observances are nothing to him, you desire not sacrifice, otherwise I would give it, you delight not in burnt offering. Though these were the fixed ordinances of the Lord under which David lived, yet he was enabled to look beyond them to something higher and better. 17-19. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Do good in your good pleasure unto Zion, build you the walls of Jerusalem. 
then shall you be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offering, then shall they offer bullocks upon your altar. When we come to God and are saved by him, then ordinances take their proper place. You cannot teach a man how to live until he is born and you cannot teach him what his spiritual life is to be until he is born again. All religious rites and ceremonies which precede the new birth go for nothing. First there must be the inward life, the broken heart, the contrite spirit, and then everything else drops into proper order. Mind this, God help us all to mind it well.